Hello everyone. Welcome to the Lightning Ball channel. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please do so and activate the notification bell. Your support fuels my continued efforts. In our previous episode, we saw how Vega attempted to invade and seize control of the labyrinth. However, Ramorous dispatched Zijin to confront him, and the outcome was unsurprising. Zijin utterly crushed Vega, shattering his arrogance and leaving him begging for mercy. But just as Zijin was about to deliver the finishing blow, something unexpected happened. In this episode, we'll shift our focus back to Dino. While Zijin and Vega were locked in their battle, significant changes were taking place on Dino's side as well, especially with Shuna set to reveal her powerful ultimate skill, Shrine Maiden of Guidance. So, let's get started. Seeing how Zijin subdued the once prideful Vega in less than five minutes left everyone at the command center in shock. It's important to note that because the floor Vega was on had been isolated, the command center's monitoring couldn't broadcast the fight. Ramorous was stunned, her jaw practically hitting the floor. Even as the ruler of the labyrinth, she didn't expect Zijin to be this strong. Benimaru, while more composed, was still impressed by Zijin's overwhelming power. He was also relieved that Zijin had fully accepted the labyrinth isolation plan. Though Zijin didn't need to take orders from Benimaru and was somewhat displeased with the isolation strategy, he understood that it was the best course of action and executed it diligently. So far, the plan devised by Benimaru and Ramaris had progressed smoothly, and both of them shared a rare moment of satisfaction. Let's rewind time a little and shift the perspective to Dino's arena where the battle was nearing its conclusion. Benimaru turned his gaze to the large screen, silently motivating himself and vowing to protect the labyrinth for Rimuru-sama. As for Ramaris, she anxiously watched her comrades on the screen, muttering about how even in this dire situation, Dino still wasn't pulling his weight. Indeed, the plan had reached a critical juncture. Ramaris intended to present Dino with a choice. If Vega could be defeated by Zijin, she would confront Dino and ask him whether he wanted to remain Feldway's puppet or return to the Monster Federation and reclaim his freedom. If Dino and his group chose to stay with Feldway, Ramaris knew she had no other option. She didn't have the heart to kill a friend, so her plan was to imprison them in the Labyrinth's prison, a special space where infinite cycles would prevent any escape. However, Ramaris wasn't hoping for such a dull outcome. She genuinely wished that the lazy and foolish Dino could return to her side, where they could continue to mess around and conduct experiments together. Ramaris even began praying for this to happen, and her feelings were conveyed to everyone present. At that moment, Shuna gently asked Ramaris if she could take charge of Dino's situation. Ramaris widened her eyes in surprise, as everyone knew that Shuna was the true authority within the Monster Federation overseeing everything from allowances to kitchen affairs, a force even Ramura found hard to refuse. Although Ramaris and Benimaru were a bit worried, they couldn't reject Shuna's request. To ease their concerns, Shuna calmly nodded. Shifting the perspective to Dino, by this point, he was utterly exhausted. He had already been killed four times since the beginning of the ordeal. As Beretta handed him yet another revival bracelet, Dino sighed inwardly. Though he had somewhat gotten used to being killed, Dino couldn't help but wonder why Ramaris was going to such lengths. If it were merely to get back at him, she wouldn't have been so resolute. Although Dino was lazy, he was also very smart. He quickly realized that Ramaris was angry because he had been following Feldway's orders. However, Dino felt an overwhelming sense of helplessness. Because he possessed an angelic ultimate skill, Lord of Justice's ultimate dominion was absolute. Dino couldn't disobey, and any attempt to resist could result in his consciousness being forcibly taken by Felway, leaving him in an even worse situation. Given the current circumstances, Dino thought that at the critical moment, he might still be able to betray Felway and help Rimuru and Ramaris. But if his consciousness were taken over, he would have no choice but to become their enemy. In fact, Dino had done everything he could to subtly leak Vega's plans. So, he felt that Ramaris shouldn't hold such a deep grudge against him. Dino suddenly realized that perhaps Ramaris wanted him to explore how death might affect the power of Feldway's control over him. However, 
the ultimate dominion was not something that could be broken so easily. Dino had indeed tried just now, but at the moment of death, he could feel Feldway's authority firmly binding his soul, or more precisely, binding the ultimate skill rooted in his soul, Lord of Heaven. If Dino wanted to break free from the control of Lord of Justice, the only way would be to completely erase this ultimate skill, which might even lead to his own destruction. Dino had another ultimate skill, Lord of Sloth, and he had considered using this skill to intervene with Lord of Heaven, possibly overriding it and freeing himself from the control. But Dino was hesitant about this plan. Even if it worked, Feldway would notice immediately. Dino might be freed, but his companions, Pico and Gracia, would be in danger, as Feldway would likely take away their free will and turn them into his puppets, said against Dino. There was also my Furuki, who was always thoughtful and worked hard for others. Although Dino wasn't particularly close to my Furuki yet, he didn't want her to be caught up in the mess either. Dino had a gentle heart, and he couldn't bear the thought of his friends getting hurt, especially by his own hands. So, for now, he decided to maintain the status quo. Just as Dino was about to give up, he heard a voice that enveloped everything with warmth and reassurance. It was Shuna's voice. Her words pierced straight into Dino's heart, making him wonder if he was really hearing this voice. Shuna gently told Dino that he could save everyone. It sounded like encouragement, but there was a gentle yet commanding authority in her voice. Dino knew that in the Monster Federation, Shuna was the most fearsome presence. Even Rimuru wouldn't dare anger her, as being scolded by Shuna was terrifying. Shuna's voice was so soft and kind, yet that gentleness made Dino feel an even greater sense of fear. If he were to respond that he couldn't do it, Shuna would undoubtedly be disappointed in him, and even Dino wanted to avoid such a situation. So, it seemed there was only one answer. Dino recalled Rammer's pure smile and secretly steeled his resolve. Strangely, at this critical moment, Dino realized he'd been needlessly indecisive about this. He thought to himself, why not just give it a try? If it didn't work out, he could always give up later. Merely complaining without even trying wasn't really Dino's style. Under the guidance of that mysterious voice, Dino clenched his fist and struck himself on the cheek. There was no pain, but he felt a sense of clarity. The significant shock seemed to numb his brain, and the continuous, dark fog of worry in his mind was swept away. Dino, now invigorated, boldly declared to his companions that he had made up his mind, rather than remain bound by Feldway, he'd risk everything for freedom. However, Pico and Gracia stared at Dino with cold expressions. Pico casually remarked that, as expected, Dino wouldn't take action unless he had died four times, calling him ridiculously slow to act. Gracia criticized Dino, pointing out that while Dino kept telling them to conserve their strength, he was the one wasting his energy in battles, now so weakened that he probably couldn't even escape. These seemingly harsh words hit Dino like bullets. My Faruqi also chimed in, saying that Dino's indecisiveness was something only Dino could manage. The truth was, his companions had long made up their minds. To others, these comments might have sounded like scolding, but to Dino, they felt like compliments. Dino smugly replied that there weren't many who could persevere like he did. Pico immediately rebuked Dino, saying that no one was praising him while Gracia mocked his shamelessness. Despite the teasing, there was a clear sense of trust and confidence in Dino's resolve hidden in their words. Dino had initially thought he'd need time to convince Pico and Gracia, and he had worried whether my Faruqi would listen to him. But now, he was astonished that he hadn't even needed to explain anything. Pico and Gracia urged Dino to act immediately, warning that if he failed, they would kill him themselves. My Faruqi, though not fond of this all-or-nothing approach, expressed her trust in Dino, as she had no other choice but to believe in him. Dino smiled, looking over at Beretta, and said it had been a long time since he'd really thrown himself into a fight. With that, Dino stretched, his usually drowsy eyes now wide open, as he began explaining the plan to his companions. Originally, Dino, Pico, and Gracia could have used their administrative privileges to erase their angelic ultimate skills, but after Abra had used this method to break free from control, 
Feldway had found a way to block it. The book didn't specify exactly how Feldway had done this. Perhaps he had stripped the three of their administrator privileges. Or maybe, as the leader of the Seven Angels of Origin, Feldway simply had higher authority. Under these circumstances, Dino planned to use the power of his Lord of Heaven ability, creative evolution, to attempt to delete the control circuit of Lord of Justice. At the same time, he would forcibly intervene in his companion's circuits using his full power. Since this had never been tried before, Dino wasn't even sure if he could delete his own control circuit, so it was a gamble. Worse still, he also needed to do it all before Feldway noticed. As Dino and his team were pondering their next steps, a figure approached. It was Shuna. She smiled and calmly offered her assistance to Dino, leaving him a bit flustered. Shuna continued explaining that she would mimic Dino's process of manipulating his ability and apply the same effect to the other three. Seeing Shuna's serene smile, Dino was filled with doubt. This kind of thing was nearly impossible, something akin to a miracle. Dino considered himself a very special existence. The Lord of Heaven ability bestowed upon him by Veldanava had creative evolution, which, through years of accumulated energy, could enable him to evolve abilities. Even for Dino, Undergoing evolution wasn't always possible under normal circumstances. And now, Shuna was proposing to understand Dino's ability while simultaneously using it on three others. It seemed impossible no matter how he thought about it. But if anyone could pull off the impossible, Dino thought of that ridiculous slime. Yes, if anything absurd was happening, it was probably related to that slime. As if reading Dino's thoughts, Shuna smiled and said that Rimurasama seemed to have foreseen the situation and believed that Dino would become an ally. Remrus's voice chimed in as well, expressing that she had always believed in Dino and had already forgiven him, encouraging him to trust in Shuna and work hard to return to his true self. Dino nodded in agreement. His plan was already risky, so if Shuna could offer support and increase the chance of success— there was no reason for the lazy Dino to refuse. Whether Rimura had truly foreseen this situation was still a mystery, but Shuna wasn't afraid. Deep in her soul, she could feel the strong connection with Rimuru, grounding her actions. The evidence lay in Shuna's newly acquired ultimate skill, Shrine Maiden of Guidance, a power that seemed like a composite of various abilities. It was essentially the culmination of all the skills Rimuru had gathered and analyzed a kind of child version of Rimura's ultimate skill lord of abundance, making failure impossible. Dino was in his action. Dino activated his lord of sloth to nullify the control circuit of lord of heaven. Then, using the power of lord of heaven's creative evolution, the creative and destructive powers of lord of heaven merged with the absolute spiritual authority of lord of sloth, resulting in Dino gaining a new ultimate skill, lord of fallen. Dino had once been a close confidant of Star King Dragon Veldanava, serving as his divine sword on the battlefield. It was during this time that Dino earned the title of the strongest swordsman. As the world slowly quieted and the wars on earth faded, Dino received the mission of Watcher from Veldanava, tasked with overseeing the world. To fulfill this responsibility, he began to travel the world. However, while Dino was away, his master, Veldanava, passed away alongside his wife, Lucia. Upon hearing this, Dino flew into an uncontrollable rage, annihilating the foolish nation responsible. But even after his vengeance, Dino's anger could not be soothed. After the revenge, Dino regained his composure, but he became indifferent to everything, even contemplating destroying the world. Fortunately, Dino realized there was no meaning in such an action. He was a contradictory figure, his strong rationality suppressed his anger, but he couldn't find any purpose or reason to move forward. As a result, he restricted his own actions and sealed his power, Lord of Heaven. Guilt over the nation's destruction made him lose his sense of purpose. It was during this time that Dino truly fell into sloth. Thankfully, his companions Pico and Gracia remained by his side. Without them, Dino might have long since faded from the world without a trace. Dino eventually found Malim, the child of Veldanava and Lucia, but he didn't view her as his master. Instead, he silently watched over her as a way to pass the time. 
Though he led a lazy life, he had Pico and Gracia collect intelligence all over the world. When Malim lost control, Dino covertly assisted Guy and Ramiris, believing that if Malim went out of control, the world might be destroyed. As the Watcher, he felt it was his duty to prevent such a catastrophe. In this way, Dino found a new meaning for his existence, and even after becoming a demon lord, this way of life continued. However, the real turning point came during that fateful Valpurgis, when a small, insignificant figure named Clayman dared to strike Malim. At that moment, Dino's eyes widened in fear. What if Malim lost control? Thankfully, it seemed that Malim was only pretending, and after discovering that Rimuru was the cause, Dino became immensely intrigued by this new demon lord. Upon encountering Rimuru's true nature, Dino found himself irresistibly drawn to Rimuru's radiant soul. Dino wasn't sure if it was mere coincidence or destiny, but he had once again found meaning in his life. Back in the Labyrinth Serena, Dino proudly announced that he had succeeded in deleting Lord of Justice's control circuit, looking around with a smug expression. But then, Dino was stunned. What he witnessed next was far more astonishing. Shuna had done something even more remarkable. Shuna had used the skill imitation. As the name suggests, it seemed like she was merely mimicking Dino's actions. But the reality was far more profound. In an instant, Shuna had analyzed everything Dino had done, replicated the essential parts, and then went beyond that. Shuna not only modified her own abilities but also deciphered and enhanced the ultimate skills of the other three. Whereas Dino could only alter his own powers, Shuna had done the impossible. She had restructured others' ultimate skills. Dino trembled in disbelief at what he was seeing. Pico's ultimate skill Lord of Rigor had transformed into the more adaptable Lord of Strictness. Gracia's ultimate skill Lord of Glory became the unassailable Lord of Splendor. Meanwhile, Mai Furuki's ultimate enchantment Lord of Topography had evolved into the more fitting ultimate skill Lord of Cosmos. This was not something that could be done by Shuna's power alone. In an instant Dino understood, there was only one person capable of such a feat, Rimuru. Dino couldn't help but mutter that, of course, Rimuru had foreseen all of this. He imagined Rimuru's smug expression in his mind. Even though Rimuru wasn't physically present, Dino was certain that through his subordinates, Rimuru's influence had made this possible. Shuna did not deny this possibility. She openly admitted that the power she used was not solely her own. The reason she was able to successfully use imitation at that moment and alter the ultimate skills was because she felt the intervention of an external force. Otherwise, she would never have been able to replicate the process through her own will alone. It was likely that space and time had been transcended, and information had been conveyed to her at just the right moment. Shuna was certain this wasn't directly Rimura-sama's doing, but undoubtedly, it was the result of Rimura-sama's power. Trying to fully comprehend such things seemed futile, and Shuna decided to stop thinking about it. However, just as they were about to celebrate the liberation of their allies, the situation changed drastically. The entire labyrinth began to tremble violently. This occurred just as Zijin was preparing to land the final blow on Vega. Everyone immediately sensed that something was wrong. The sensation was similar to when Velgrind had attacked the labyrinth before, but this time, the force felt even stronger. The perspective shifted to Ramaris. Panic engulfed Ramaris, Benimaru, and the others. An unexpected enemy had forcibly broken into the isolated layer where Vega was located, and after measuring the enemy's existence points, they discovered it was none other than Insect Lord Zelenus, whose existence points had reached an astonishing 114 million. This was a Genesis level monster. If Melim or Guy were here, perhaps it could be different. But for everyone present, victory was impossible. Fortunately, they detected the intrusion immediately. Had they been caught by surprise, they would have been doomed. Zijin's swift defeat was proof enough of the danger. Amid the despair, a sudden laugh echoed through the room, Diablo. Unlike the others, Diablo looked at the screen displaying Zelenus with an appreciative gaze, commenting on how impressive it was that someone could defeat Zijin. He declared, with full confidence, that he would handle this opponent himself. Diablo's face radiated with a self-assured smile. 
All right, that's all for this video. I'm sure everyone has already noticed that Seal's power has now surpassed the limits of time and space. The power Shuna obtained is undoubtedly a support from Seal. Here's something worth noting. Although the book doesn't explicitly mention Seal's involvement in Shuna's awakening of her ultimate skill, and the process is also presented as part of the voice of the world system, it's clear that Shuna's ultimate skill shrine Maiden of Guidance is a downgraded version of Lord of Abundance. This is pretty interesting. Previously, Seal would directly announce changes in skills, but now she can even use the voice of the world to complete these transformations, which clearly shows that Seal has made further progress again. For those who have read the web novel, you might recall that Seal and Rimuru maintained a long period of fake death to deceive their enemies. So, I think that here in the light novel, when Rimuru returns, he may be operating in a low-energy state at different times to mislead Felway, making him believe that Rimuru no longer exists in this world. In this way, Rimuru can secretly help the battlefield, as he did with Shuna. Of course, this is just my speculation and we'll have to wait for volume 22 to confirm it. As for the next episode, I think everyone knows what's coming, Diablo vs. Zelenus. The most exciting battles of volume 22 are about to unfold, including Diablo vs. Zelenus, Zijin vs. Zelenus, Diablo vs. Vega, and the epic team-up of the strongest four against Vega. Although only a few episodes remain, each one will be incredibly exciting. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Your support is greatly appreciated. See you in the next one.